In this video today we're going to be covering the modeling, unwrapping, and texturing of a hammer. Again, this is a realistic hammer. We're going to probably make it a little bit more cartoony and then have more of a painted texture feel as opposed to it looking super realistic. So to get started with this, again, I don't um, need a ton of reference. This is probably a good enough image, but again, the more images you have, the better idea you're going to kind of know what you're modeling, texturing, unwrapping, whatever. So again, um, I mean, I've seen a hammer before, so I know what the bottom of this looks like. But again, if you don't and you're modeling something, for example, you want to get as much reference of that object as you can. So again, just to make my life easier, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this image right in my viewport and use that to work with. Let's go ahead and rename this. Hammer ref for reference. And then again, like before, I'll go ahead and knock the transparency down. So just looking at this hammer before I even start modeling it out, let's actually bring the real one up just so it's a little bit more visible. And we'll just minimize this. What I'm going to do is kind of initially model this in two separate pieces. So you can see right here, if I zoom in, there's a stark difference where this is obviously forged steel that is connected to the handle right here. So there's going to be a hole kind of right in here. And then this probably plastic or fiberglass handle is kind of just inserted into and then it's probably held with either a bolt or glue or whatever. It might even be showing up through there. It just depends on, again, how it's assembled. But just breaking the shape down, we have, let's go ahead and select a color here. We're having this kind of main part of the head. This is just straight up going to be a cylinder. And then it's going to have this kind of connection point, these little lines that you can see where it was machined or whatever. I'm not going to worry about modeling those in. That's something I'm going to paint in. But then again, this whole side right all in here is going to be really flat. This is going to be another mostly flat side that's just curved down. And then again, we're going to have two separate prongs. So I'll probably just model this as one piece and then split it and separate it. As far as the handle goes, I'm going to close that. This is just that same shape where this is pretty much a box and you can see kind of a slight chamfer going along right here all the way down. And then when it gets to this rubber handle part, it's probably going to be a little bit more round. So I'll probably end up at some point splitting this off to where the rubber part of the handle is separate from this probably fiberglass part. But again, the rubber is just a sleeve that goes over the fiberglass. So again, I'll model that in three separate pieces. So let's jump right into this. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to be trying to model this symmetrically. So I want my mesh to be kind of face forward in the x-axis. Because again, that's just best practices stuff we've went over working with symmetry before. Um, I just held shift and clicked on this. It dropped in this new cube. So this is going to be its default size of one meter. So hammers usually aren't a meter tall. So let's go ahead scale that down about that big. If I want to know the size of this, go ahead and turn this off so it's a little bit more visible. You have view right here and then the dimension tool and this little guy will tell you how big something is. So now we're at 305 millimeters. So we can scale this up and it'll actively increase or decrease. Now we're at almost 400 millimeters, but we'll call this good. And again, I don't really need the dimensions on anymore. I'm not actively going to measure this. I just wanted it to be roughly about the correct size in the world. So if the hammer was going to fit into a box, say about this side, again, head being up here, body down there, this is the hammer kind of facing forwards me. So this would be the head of the hammer right there. This image that I just dropped down, aside from it being way too large, so let's scale it down, is also kind of facing the wrong way. And that's okay, because again, I'm not going to actually build off this directly. I could, but if I wanted to do that, I could just go ahead and rotate this image 
90 degrees and just offset it over here. So this is roughly about the size I'm going to be building this hammer. And the last thing to take into consideration is again this is kind of a perspective shot so I can see the top of this hammer. I can't see the bottom of it. So as far as our box goes instead of it being a shot like this where the hammer is, it's a shot more like this because again we can see the top, we can't see the bottom. So again it's going to be kind of deceivingly longer than it actually is, so I'm, I'm going to want my box to be a little bit longer than this hammer actually is. And again, I'm just eyeballing that, but just some kind of wisdom to take into consideration when I'm trying to read a perspective angle from a shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have our box, we'll just call this hammer head. Let's actually duplicate it, so right click. Go to duplicate. Now I have gonna have two of the same thing. Oops, let's do this again. Go under duplicate and hit duplicate again because there's different types of duplications you can do. So now I just have two called hammerhead and hammerhead two. Take hammerhead two, rename this for right now, hammer handle. So this one is gonna be moved down about this far. Let's go ahead and turn this one off. And I'm just going to change one setting that I have different from you guys. There we go. And let's grab this thing and shrink it in. So again, this is just kind of the gist for the size of my handle. Now let's go ahead and grab this, and this will be the gist rough proportions of the size of the top of my hammer. So again, this is by no means a hammer, but it's definitely getting a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and move this out. So let's take care of the handle first. That's going to be kind of the easiest portion. So ideally when you're holding something, again, it being facing this way. And axes wise, let's go ahead and do toggle grid. If I go to the front, I have kind of the hammers. Oops. Left side right here. Hammers right side right here this is the front so again facing this way and again the importance of this is we want to make this symmetrical from left to right so when we turn symmetry on it'll be symmetry in the x so again when i grab this side this other side gets grabbed so when i move stuff or model on it it'll happen on both sides at once and that's something that if you had your hammer in here and you initially made it kind of rotated the oops said symmetry on when i did that rotated the wrong way so it's 90 degrees this way so when you go to the front your hammer sideways all you do is again do what I just did just rotate it back the other way and again just make sure this is the front of the hammer this is the back and just get yourself centered in the scene again that's a really important thing to do because again arbitrarily modeling this at some weird angle like this it isn't going to help you it's not going to be easy to work with it's just going to get harder and harder because, again, you're at a really weird angle. And the majority of the tools in Moto want you to be kind of centered where things are upright and whatnot. And then after you're done modeling it, then you could place it sideways and bend over and twist it on a bench somewhere. Or place it after it's been modeled. So again, let's look at this handle. I'm looking at it from the top. Again, this guy being the front over here. We're going to want this thing to be a little bit more narrow than it is wide because again when you're holding something it's significantly more comfortable if it kind of fits your hand. Again, hammer is a tool that you're going to use for many years so it should be pretty comfortable. You're not going to want a hammer handle that's really wide and shaped like this because this isn't something you're going to want to kind of have your hand holding on to. So something like that. Let's actually make this a little bit more visible. Make that about 50%. So this is just something I'm going to eyeball. I'm just going to do a loop slice. Turn off slice selected. Again, I'm probably not going to use any tools you guys haven't seen before. Let's just eyeball this into place. So now we have that split. Let's lasso select these bottom polygons do a cut paste so control X control V so now they're in the same spot but I have if I double click here this is the kind of shaft of the hammer and this is the hammers handle so again we still have our 
different meshes right here. So I'm going to add a new mesh. So hit the N key to add a new mesh. Rename this hammer shaft. Go to the hammer handle sub mesh. Oops, and I actually copied and pasted that to the wrong mesh. So we're going to cut this, paste it here, and go over here, cut this, and paste it here, and then we'll unhide this. So again, hammer head, hammer shaft, and hammer handle. And I'm just going to independently model each one of these. So let's start with this guy. I want to actually close up this so there's no holes, so I can either double click, hit P for polygon, or click two edges that are across from each other and bridge those two edges together. So segments one, twist zero, that guy set to curve is just fine. Right click in here or hit apply and that bridges together. So now what I want to do is I want to give this a little bit of curvature and then again making the bottom a little bit more round as well. So let's go ahead and add that. So I'm just going to select these edges. And again, I don't want this with using the bevel tool real quick. Roundness level. I don't need this roundness level something crazy high like five. There's no reason that this hammer needs to be this round. Because again, let's pretend like we're making it for a game. A hammer is going to be small on the screen. So what we're going to do instead, let's undo that a few times and make sure we have all of our edges selected. So one, two, three, four. And down here again, it says four edges selected. Use that bevel tool again, and let's just see what a roundness level one is going to do. So again, it gives us cut, cut, cut. So it turned one edge into three edges total. It increased our polygon count before. Let's undo that a few times. We were at 12. Just that bevel popped us up to 44, so we're going to call that good. Let's go ahead to the side view. Actually, let's just eyeball it from here because again, I dropped that in a perspective view so it's not going to appear in the right or the left views, which is okay. I'm going to have this subtle curvature where it is kind of in here, it comes out and then it goes back in. So out, in, and then back out. So a really exaggerated version. So to do that, I'll go ahead and add two edge loops. So we'll leave these, hit escape to drop the tool. Now I'm just going to use the scale tool and just scale on this Y axis. Because again, if I scale on both, it's going to grow them up. If I just click anywhere in scale, then it's going to scale them up from a weird location. So what I'm going to do with my scale tool active, and again, if you click and move this on accident, you can reset it by just hitting another action and then going back to that action. So if you're up here and it moves over here, you can just click on rotate, click back on scale, it'll reset. If you like hotkeys, you can just hit W for move and then R again for scale and then it goes back. So from here, I'm just gonna scale these up and then move them up. Cause again, I want my indent on the bottom about right there and the out one about right there. So again, this one's gonna come out. Let's go ahead and scale that up a little bit. This one's gonna come in. So let's scale that one in a little bit. Now let's bevel both of these and see what we get. So let's just bevel them both at the same time. V to bevel. Scale this out and let's see what we get. So the top one looks like I scaled out too much. The bottom one's looking pretty good. So let's undo that. Grab this edge. Scale it in a little bit. I don't need it coming out that much. Let's actually scale it in a little bit on this one, because again, I was scaling it on the center one, so it was scaling every axis. So I scaled it in or up and then in like this, but just that was an exaggerated form of it. So somewhere around there. So hold shift, middle mouse click, grab these, B to bevel, and pull this out. So somewhere around there. Call this good. And if I want, this wider portion, I can go ahead and either move this down in that manner or grab this line before I bevel it, move it down, bevel, pull this back out. So somewhere in here. So again, modeling with stuff like this, this is a lot of guess and check. I mean, honestly, I've never modeled a hammer before. 
So this is kind of new to me, but again, you can just see this guess and check process where I try something that does work, it doesn't work, and then I just kind of switch it up from there. Let's scale that in a tiny bit. So now let's look at the bottom of this. This, since I beveled a square, it created a big huge end gun. So let's fix that real quick. The first thing I'm going to actually do is do an extrude, scale it down, scale it in a little bit, just to give this a little bit of roundness down here. So I'm just going to fix this end gun. So what I'm going to do is actually, since we want to work with this hammer symmetrically, I usually want to have a symmetry line running. So I'm just going to do a loop slice, set this to zero, and so I select it isn't selected. So it goes all the way to the end gun and it stops. Normally I'm going to want a kind of loop going all the way through the center of it. So let's go ahead and establish that. Let's grab this, do a loop slice, set it to 50%. If it's not 50%, you can hit uniform, hit spacebar. So that goes from here all the way up to here. It hits another end gun, so I need one on this side as well. Select two edges, loop slice, count at one. It's all good. Spacebar to drop that. Now I can just connect to these either from here to here, and then I could manually go in and slice these, so from here across to here, from here to here. So let's actually do that in this way. So I don't wanna to have to do this kind of twice, so let's do symmetry on the X on. Let's just do a quick test, select some verts over here, and they select over here, so these cuts should go through. So again, C for this slice tool, which also is if you go to Mesh Edit, there's Edge Slice right here, and that's the slice that I'm using. So left click on this vertice, left click right here. Again, since symmetry's on, it cut from here to here, and from here over to here. Hold Shift, because I want to start a new cut. Click, click. And then if I don't like the holding Shift mechanic, I can just hit Spacebar or Escape to drop the tool, or reactivate the tool, left click left click, escape, reactivate the tool, left click, left click. So now we have kind of quads all the way down here. So let's look at the top real quick. So now let's try something up here. So instead of doing a cut from here to here and then cutting it across sideways like that, what I'm going to do is just try the bridge tool in a few different methods. Let's go ahead and double click so we have all the edges and Let's remove this edge and this edge. So I'm kind of bridging these edges to these edges. So with these guys selected, deselect that one I accidentally selected down there. I'm going to Control B, right click. And again, Control B is probably a custom hotkey. So again, you'd want to be under the edge over here, and then bridges right here. So again, this bridges it back and forth like this and drop that tool. So let's go ahead and look at the bottom. We don't have exactly the same result. So let's undo that and real quick. Right click bridge. Now let's look at our settings. So we have one segment, no twist, mode set to curve. The important one here is again segment set to one, but this one is the important one, this auto connection. So that was on. If we try this going, let's just go ahead and delete these polygons and start over again. If I try to bridge these polygons to these polygons over here, let's do a bridge, auto connects on, right click. That didn't work out so well. So let's just rethink this. And again, this is another guess and check process. So let's grab all the poly or the edges all the way around. Symmetry is now off. I'm going to hold control, deselect these middle edges right here. And now I'm going to try to bridge it together. So bridge, right click. So this gives us the correct result. So again, look down here. We have polygons on the left, on the right, the center line dividing. Jumping back up to the top, we get the exact same scenario. So again, that's just a different way of getting this exact same result. You could go in and manually cut everything. Or again, let's just undo this a few times. We can have these edges selected, these edges selected, do a bridge with auto connection on, 
right click, and this is good to go. So again, just a few different ways of looking at stuff. So I'm going to call that good for this ham ham hammer handle. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at the shaft. So this, if we look at the image over here, it looks like from right here, it's just two edges. So it looks like there's one edge coming through right here, another one right here, and then a big flat surface right here. And then these ones, the edges get closer together. So it's kind of almost triangle shaped, but then gets cut off. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Go ahead our loop slice, pull this up. Let's actually grab this guy and move it down just a little bit. Click here. Now I'm going to scale this and let's just do it one axis at a time. So and a little bit that way and a little bit that way. Now it also looks like it's just in general just a little bit fatter up here and then it gets thinner going down. So let's go ahead and double click this edge this edge, this edge, and this edge, and again different way of selecting that just for a different thought would be go to the top view and middle mouse lasso, hold shift, lasso, 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 middle mouse button, and I get those guys selected again the same way. Beta bevel, now let's pull this out. So this one we don't want the extra edge in here, so let's take the roundness level down to zero. Let's look at how this one would line up. So somewhere in here-ish is good. Looking at this, our kind of distances here are about the same. So we'll call that good. And then again, these are a little bit more pointed together. So let's just grab these guys. And I want to scale these all the same amount. So let's turn symmetry on on the X. When I grab this edge, that one gets selected. So let's grab this and on all axes, scale this edge down just a little bit. So let's look over here. We're at about 60. So I'm going to change these. I can either change them one at a time to 60. So 60, enter, 60, enter, 60, enter. Ideally, we'd want to put that in once, but this is good. So we can hit the escape, escape button. So let's scale this one down 60. So again, I grab this one and it auto grabs that one. Right click. And now instead of either trying to arbitrarily scale this down, or put these in one at a time. Let's hit this little circle right here. What this is going to do is all these circles highlight now. So now we can put in 60 once, hit enter, and now all the values come up as 60. Let's hit the escape tool. So let's get that symmetry line in here. So again, let's do that. A few less steps. So grab two edges, loop slice, hit uniform so it's centered. Go over here, same thing, uniform. Look at the bottom. So the bottom, we didn't have this polygon filled in. Let's go ahead, double click, P for polygon. Now, let's do that same strategy we used up there to save us some time. So we're going to click this guy, remove it, double click this edge, remove, remove, turn off symmetry. Again, some tools work well with symmetries, others don't. So activate that bridge tool, auto connects on, right click, gives us this good solution. Go down here, do the same thing, delete this polygon, double click, deselect, deselect, bridge, auto connects on, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and make both of these visible. And let's just look at this, turn the wireframe off, just get a good feeling for this. So this is feeling pretty good. So I'll hide these and have our hammer visible. So this is going to be the kind of complicated part. So just looking at what we have here, probably going to want this a little bit more narrow and that's just proportion stuff. And let's actually bring this image closer because we're going to use it just to help us with the model a little bit more. And again, this is one that if you're not comfortable just looking at this image and trying to model it, definitely get a side view of a claw hammer, get a front view, and drop these in like we've done before. So what I'm going to do is just grab this front edge and pull it back, because I'm going to really be focusing on this part of the hammer, and then connect this as a separate piece, and then merge it all into one whole piece. 
So if we look at this shape, let's go ahead and hide this. Just opening this up in Photoshop real quick. What I'm going to be doing right now is focusing on, let's go ahead and change this color and drop its opacity down. I'm going to be really trying to focus on just this part of the shape. And how am I going to model that? Because once I get that part modeled, I can extrude it out and then get that thickness. So if I look at the shape and just try to break it down, I mean, our easiest section is right here. This guy is just a box. So from here, I could probably extrude up, keeping this simple at first, and then extrude out right here. Oops, let's get this extrude out from the box right here. I'll eventually get it. There we go. And then this distance right here, I can just shrink in to make it a little bit more narrow as it goes down. And then I could bend it afterwards. So again, from here, P for bend, bend it down. This one, I can extrude this shape out. And then here, I would probably just drop in a cylinder with a handful of edges. Bling, bling, bling. Kind of draw the cylinder. There we go. And then I would connect this guy to this part right here. So let's go ahead with that kind of mental plan of attack. And that's just a good thing to do when you're working with this stuff. is to just kind of think out the very primitive shapes hammer those out, no pun intended, and then keep chugging along, getting more and more detail. Select our hammerhead, unhide it. So again, we didn't need this big, huge box, but I actually like this as a reference. So what I'm going to do is let's pull this back out. Somewhere around in here was where we had it. I'm actually just going to copy this, hit new mesh, hit paste, and I'll just say this head ref for size. So now when I grab this box and shrink it down, I still have this other box that I'm working in to kind of know the major proportion that I'm working with. So I kind of shrink this down and kind of establish this part of the hammer. Let's just show the rest of the hammer so we kind of know where we're working with stuff. And our guy is going to be about this narrow. Again, we want to make sure that that, let's just make both of these visible. Make sure that this kind of encapsulates this whole piece. Let's just scale this to be something like this. There we go. It sticks out. I'll have it stick out just a little bit more. So again, plan of attack. We're going to have this chunk. It's going to come out here, extrusion out this way, extrusion out this way, and then a cylinder over here. Let's actually turn our wireframe back on. Extrude this one up. Extrude this out. Extrude this one out. Let's probably not have it out that far. And then I don't have a cylinder here yet, so what I'm going to do is just do a quick copy-paste and move this out here. Again, if you have an older version of Moto, something a little bit different is going to happen when you do a copy-paste and try to move it. You have to do a copy-paste, hit H to hide. Your old one is going to be sitting under your new one, so you double-click this and it would be a separate piece. And then you could go ahead and move it. So again, the other option that you would have would be to use the clone tool, which again, if you have questions about that, feel free to ask in class. So I'll copy paste, pull that out. So this is just kind of my placeholder for the head of the hammer. And just for fun, let's just go ahead. Oops, undo that a few times. And just bevel this so it's a little bit rounder, just so I know what I'm working with. So again, this portion right here, starting from about right here, I'm going to consider as being right here. I want this to kind of curve down. 
So before I get started with this, let's establish a symmetry line. So loop slice in the middle at 50%, uniform just in case at backspace. And speaking of just in case, let's go ahead and save this. So hammer 01. We have that on the desktop for right now. So right here is pretty much this entire area is just flat. This area is, is going to be where it starts to curve. So again, I can take a advantage of that bend function. So this, since when it does bend, it's going to lose a little bit of left to right length. I'm going to actually extend this out a little bit farther than I'd initially need to and shrink it down. There we go. And let's just grab these edges and widen them out a little bit. So now from here, I mean, I can't bend this. It's one flat polygon, so let's do some loop slices. So loop slice, let's throw in, get four, I think five will work. So from here, I'm just going to go to a right view. Let's grab this and do a bend. Again, a bend is going to be in this deform tab. So let's walk through that bend process. So I'm just selecting all these vertices. So middle mouse clicking, left click bend over here, turns on the tool, right click, kind of activates where you're going to bend it from. So I'm going to bend it from, oh, let's say right here, bend it to the end of this thing then click this and bend it down so we have something like that. So let's go ahead, hit perspective, and compare this real quick. So again, this one is a little bit thinner distance-wise here. So I could go in and adjust that. Well, I could hit undo and then make this thinner and then bend it down. But honestly, what I'm just going to do is let's go to a side view and just kind of adjust this by hand real quick. We'll make the whole thing a little bit thinner. And these I'll just go in and just make a little bit thinner by hand. And again, I'm just middle mouse selecting these. So something like that should be good. So again, we still don't have the split right here, but that's okay. And again, this little cut right there, I can just deal with that with texture. I don't need to cut it out of the shape. So let's worry about connecting our cylinder to this piece over here first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just delete this polygon out. So I have an empty hole, and then I'll put a cylinder, an actual cylinder right here, and then worry about connecting the two. So go back to the basic tab, select a cylinder, and sides, let's do, I think eight should be fine. So zoom out, let's see how round eight sided. Let's actually hmm, get 10. Yeah, let's do 10. And again, just kind of arbitrary number, but I want to keep it relatively low because remember, let's scale this down first and move it up. And I'm being careful when I'm scaling this down. Let's go through this process again. When I initially put this cylinder in, I didn't go ahead and draw a new tool. I didn't left click and draw the cylinder in like this. I made sure to left click, look at the settings of the tools. I have all these positions and stuff over here. I want all these guys to be at zero. So again, do a little trick where you click this little bubble, hit zero, makes everything set to zero. Well, actually, the radius we don't want set. <laughs> we want this guy to actually have a radius. But if we ever get a bunch of numbers here and it kind of screws everything up, what you can do is hold shift, click on the cylinder, and it's going to drop in a new cylinder for you. So let's double click this and delete it. Ideally, we didn't really want that cylinder. But what that did was if we grab our mesh again, do the hammer head one left click on this. Now you can see all these got reset. So position are all set to zero. Radiuses are all back to where they were, but then the sides and segments go back up. So the segments, we just wanted one. Sides, we wanted 10. And then I 
you can either go down here and hit apply or right click in the menu, either or, so let's hit apply. So getting back to what I was saying, this is, go to the front view, turn the wireframe on. Since everything was zeroed out, this thing is perfectly symmetrical now. So again, if I turn symmetry on, select over here, symmetry is going to work. So that was just something that you just kind of, once you get the hang of it, you do kind of fast. But again, throwing these shapes down at world center is going to help you out in the long run because now I know for a fact that this guy is dead center. The next thing that I did was hold control and click. So I snap this rotation. Again, if you don't like snapping stuff over here, you could just put 90 degrees. It'll plunk down where you need it. But again, just making it to where if I go from the sides, this is now straight up and down. This edge is straight up and down to match this straight up and down. It's just going to make your life easier having everything in a sense square. So let's scale this down to a little bit more appropriate size. And line this up. So we'll have it about right here and probably a little bit smaller. So again, let's just test to make sure my symmetry is still working. Let's grab all these. Yep, we're good on symmetry. So now I need to make this empty hole go into this hole. So again, if I double click here, this says we have six edges. Double click here, this says we have 10 edges. So obviously this one can just automatically connect to this one. So let's try. Turn that off and delete this hammer size. And then let's actually, before we do that, let's just look at the size of this real quick. I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit. And then, so one more thing, let's add this little bit of a curve right here. So let's bevel this edge. So this is going to be one thing that's going to be kind of weird. It put out a square right here. So just how it beveled it, I really don't like. So instead of doing that, because ideally if I did this bevel, I'm going to have to clean up because this is now an end gun, this is an end gun, and this is an end gun. So what I'm going to do instead of this, let's turn symmetry off. So I'll just do one loop slice through here. Move this one up a little bit. Let's do a loop slice through here. Move this one over a little bit. Now let's go to the side. Now we can just adjust this guy. So now again we have all quads here and we have this subtle curve going. So it's just a little bit better way of handling that. So let's try to connect this. Again, I'm just going to double click this edge, double click this edge, and under edge, I'm just going to try a bridge and see what happens. So left click, auto connects on, apply. So lo and behold, this just did not work. Again, on the bottom, it kind of looks okay. Over here, it looks horrible. Over here, it looks just as bad. So we don't have an autom automated way of doing this. So let's go ahead and do this kind of one part at a time. So let's grab these two top edges, bridge those. OK, that kind of worked. Let's go ahead and grab this bottom edge. Oops. And if I try to bridge these, what it's doing is it's trying to auto connect and bridge all the way up and down and around like this. So what I just want to do is have both of these edges selected, hit bridge, turn auto connect off, and hit apply. And that's a little bit better. So again, let's look at our hammer reference. So again, this has more of a gradual slope. So I'll probably end up putting more cuts through here. Let's just back this edge off just a little bit. 
So now we're trying to fit three edges into one edge. So this is where we're just going to rely on triangles. So let's just grab and do the easy part first. Which actually, we can just do this with symmetry on. So turn symmetry on, grab this edge and this edge. So it's going to grab both. Bridge, right click. Now we can just have a triangle here and a triangle here, and it won't be a big deal. So to do this, double click, P will fill that in with a polygon, double click, P fills this in with a polygon. But now we do have another problem. Previously I said I wanted to do some oops, kind of cuts going this way, but since we have triangles here now, if I try to do an edge slice, it doesn't have slice selected on, and it goes to this triangle and it stops. It doesn't know how to handle this. So I'll show you two different ways of doing this. The first, let's turn symmetry off and grab every edge all the way around here. Turn this off as well. So we got all these edges. Do that same loop slice. So now everything's a little bit weird. Let's hit uniform. It's still, again, you can see every one of these triangles that's having trouble. It's trying to cut through. It's just not making it. So let's actually hit a slice selected. And now it loops all the way across. So let's go take our count up. And we'll call that good. So now again, this used to be the whole triangle. Now it's a quad, a quad, and then a triangle, which isn't a big deal at all. Turn our reference back on and let's adjust this. Let's grab this first one. Double click, shrink him down. This can be the center one, shrink him down as well. So the next thing I wanted to address is let's turn the wireframe off. As you can see, some of these edges, like from this polygon to this polygon, you can't see this edge right here. Let's grab this and move it down. Now, since I move this down, now you can see that this edge is there. And this is, again, something that's called smoothing. So I can determine how smooth or unsmooth this is. So to do this, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and grab our entire hammer, now that it's almost done being modeled. Grab the whole thing, hit M for material, just name this hammer, and hit OK. So now our entire hammer has a material. Let's go to the shading tree, open this up, click on our little material right here, and again, this is where you could go and change the color, do whatever, but there's a new property I want to show you guys, and that's this right here, a smoothing angle. This is set to 40 degrees, so if I take this and decrease it, so let's put it at zero, now every single edge is going to be faceted. So it doesn't matter. Pretty much every polygon you can see, again, unless it has no, in a sense, curvature to it. And even that one, depending on the lighting, there we go. You can see that it has hard angles, but again, curved ones like this are going to be more obvious. So again, I don't want a bunch of faceting on my object. I want it to look as smooth as possible in most cases. So let's look at our reference. There is some hard angles in here, but I'm going to want to just paint all those in for this project at least. So let's go back to that shading tree, have this material Selected. Now our smoothing angle was at 40. We bumped it down to 0. So now let's increase it. Something like 90. Take a look. So these, it didn't smooth through. So let's increase it past 90. So 180 would be a straight line across. So 179, 180, something like that. It's just going to smooth, try to smooth pretty much everywhere. So for this example, that's kind of the look that I want. Kind of smooths everything to everything, but again, you can kind of just mess with this. Try a couple different angles, so 120, I'm not really liking. Another common one you could set it to would be 89, so 90 degree angles like this right here, it'll have a hard edge too. And again, zoom back in on this, this is just something that's kind of personal preference. So I'll just bump it back up to 180. So go ahead and call this good. So the next thing, just to get this curve feeling a little bit better, let's go ahead and just look at this from the side. Let's take these few verts, just bring these up a little bit more. So 
So something, that one's probably a little too high. Something like that. Let's actually... Scale this whole portion up a little bit. Then compensate by moving these parts out. So somewhere in there, again, not being too concerned but getting the overall shape looking a little bit better. So real quick, let's give this a quick unwrap. Oops, I want to turn that off. I actually want to turn off this image and let's save our work. So let's grab this handle, isolate it. What I'm going to do is I'll just cut off the entire bottom. So select all these polygons. Let's go over to our UV edit tab. and make sure that those textures are selected. Again, if you ever open your file and you don't see your unwrap over here, over here normally on the properties tab, open up lists, open up UV maps, click on texture, your UVs should show up. So left click, hold over, hover over the three viewport, right click, this guy set, H to hide that. And now I just wanna cut off the top portion as well, left click, right click, move him over here. Let's actually hide him as well. Let's just cut this guy in half like this. Actually not even in half, let's just make it one big piece. So again, this unwraps all the way. So let's unhide that. Let's kind of sort this. The finished stuff, again, I'll have over here on the right. This unfinished stuff, I'll move over to the left because again, technically it has an unwrap. We just want to re-unwrap it so it looks a little bit nicer. So again, we've unwrapped quite a bit of stuff by now. So I'll try to speed this up. Grab the top, grab the bottom polygons, left click, right click, move over here, H to hide. Grab that back seam again left click, right click. Again, if I'm getting a red hole here and here, you just want to have the seal holes checked. Otherwise, you can just lasso select and grab the top and bottoms of these holes, re-unwrap it, and you'll get a really similar result to this one. Let's unhide this, move him over here. So the hammer head is the only thing that's left. So let's go ahead and take Actually, what we forgot to do modeling-wise is put in our little hook right here. So this should be fairly easy. Let's just go ahead and grab... Luckily, I got to this before I unwrapped it. Get the same number of edges going here and here. I don't have symmetry on. Hit B to bevel, right-click, pull this out. So again, I'm looking at down here for where my gap's at. So now I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these polygons in here all the way around, up and to right there, hit delete. Now I'll just do grab all three of these, do a join average. Again, that's in the modeling tab under vertex. Join average is right here. Let's get those three on the top. Join average. And now I just want to make this more of a gradual V as opposed to it being a V right here and then just straight down. So I'm going to grab these polygons or these vertices, scale them in a little bit, grab these ones, scale them in, and these ones, something like that. So now what I'm going to do is kind of bridge these from here to here. So let's just do those ones for right now. Bridge, right click. Grab these ones, bridge, right click. Now there's these ones. These ones are going to be kind of tricky to see. So I'm going to do is middle mouse, hide all these polygons, and then go from here to up here, bridge, from here to right here, bridge. There we go. Now this guy is ready to pull out some nails. So again, let's hide all this handle stuff and go ahead and finish our hammer. So let's do this portion first. 
Shift H to hide that, and we'll just double click. So again, this is just, I forgot to model it, so let's go ahead and do it now. I forgot to turn this from an N-Gon into quads. So let's just manually go in. I'll just cut this a few times. Again, if you want, you could do the bridge feature, either or, but we'll call that good. So again, double click here, and let's just treat this like a cylinder where we go up from the bottom. And again, just some best practices stuff. There's going to be a seam running right here, so let's put that on the bottom because that's going to be the least likely area that we're going to see it. You usually want to hide your seams like this. So this front should cut off and the top should wrap around just like this. So this side's warping a little bit. We have compressed there, uncompressed there. So let's grab this, unwrap, right click. Let's change this to X. Again, we can just cycle through these and try to find one that looks better. So changing it to X on the V or X on the U, both of those look fine. So we'll call these good. Move these over here. And let's go ahead, grab all our finished stuff, H to hide. Now let's look at this hammer. Let's just take the bottom off in one big piece. And I'm just doing this in polygon mode. Oops. Let's get the claws all the way to here. So let's see what happens when I unwrap this. Again, I get a nice predictable shape, so I like that. Again, if you're questioning yourself, feel free to throw a checker pattern on here. So that one's good to hide. So let's just double click this edge, unwrap, and see what happens. So we got something like this. So again, this isn't too bad. Checker pattern wise, this should be okay-ish, but again we have the bigger side over here than over here. So let's do that unwrap, change it to Y. I'm not really liking these. There we go, so that one works. So I changed it from U to V, so V and X. We have a good result here. Alternatively, if I still wasn't getting a good result, I could double click this edge, cut it all the way in half, get something like that, and that'd be just as fine. So again, now we have this big huge shape. And let's throw a checker pattern on there just to be sure. So I just drag and dropped that. So now looking at this, the unwrap over here looked okay, but now we're getting big checkers over here, and really small ones over here. So I'm actually not liking that too much. So let's try, if we double click this edge and just cut it completely in half. Now let's look at it. So they're still a little bit smaller over here than over here, but it's not nearly as bad. So we'll actually call this probably good. But let's just double check some of these other ones. Actually, this one's going to be a little bit better. So we'll call that good. So now we have kind of a left half and a right half of a hammer. And again, kind of sad that we have to cut the seam right down the top of this. But again, as long as we're painting in 3D, this seam isn't going to be an issue. So let's delete this texture out of here. There we go. I just deleted that real quick. Because again, we really don't need that stuff showing up. So now I need to pack all these UVs, because again, if they're not in this little space right here, then it's not going to work very well. So again, let's just hit pack. So pack UVs, pack stretch orient, hit OK. That plugs everything in. Now let's manually just adjust this a little bit, because again, I'd rather have these straight pieces going up and down a little bit better. So again, I don't want to get too close to the edges or too close to individual pieces. So something like this. I'm kind of just rotating these so they're a little bit closer to being straight up and down. And again, if I want, I can go in and do the orient pieces. 
and that. So if I grab him, rotate him at 45 degrees. So he's selected orient pieces, it'll snap him straight up and down. Or I can manually go in and do that. So that one, it didn't work out too well. I'd rather have it going up and down this way. So you just got to keep an eye on those. So this should be good for an unwrap. So let's jump into texture in this. So again, we're not going for photorealistic. So let's go ahead and jump to the paint tab. Zoom in on this. Make sure that we're on our paint tools, not our sculpt tools. And let's add a texture here. So again, all these are in separate pieces now. Right at this point, I'm just going to throw them all into the same mesh. So it's an end for new mesh. Just name this hammer. Now let's copy and paste all of Mindy here. I'll actually cut paste. So grab everything, control X, select our one just called hammer, hit paste. Let's actually just name this hammer complete. Let's just go in and delete all these extra ones real quick. So we just have the one hammer. So just like before, we're going to want to add an image to this. So images tab, add clip, new image. Call this hammer paint, make it a PNG. For right now, I'll just have it on my desktop. And this one, I'll actually make a 512 by 512. RGBA is fine. Hit OK. So now we have that image created. If we go to our shading tree. Our hammer is empty because again I deleted that checker pattern out. So let's just grab this hammer paint and assign it. Now when I go to paint on here, let's go ahead and turn our image back on. So we can use this as kind of a reference. And let's save. So just real quick, if you closed and then reopened at this point, what you're going to want to do is to make sure that you're painting on your object. Have the mesh selected, lists, UV maps, have the texture selected, images over here, make sure that you have your hammer underscore paint or whatever it's called, and then Again, whatever polygons you have selected, even if you switch to another one, those are going to be the polygons you paint on. So let's have no polygon selected, airbrush, we have a red color, let's make it a little bit different of a red color, somewhere in, eh, take it more towards orange, somewhere in there. Right click, change our brush size, and then I can paint on this. And again, I want to only make the shaft red, so let's switch to polygon mode, so hit three, double click. And now I'll just be painting on this, but I don't want the selection in the way. So again, I can leave it in the way. Go to our airbrush and paint on this and not accidentally paint over here. But we can also just change to vertices real quick and it'll remember those polygons are selected. So now I can go ahead and, oops, fill this in all the way. So the other thing, you can do shift H so just this guy's visible. Let's do the paintbrush instead. And I can just make sure that I get this guy completely filled in. Again, sadly, the fill tool is a little bit wonky in here. So I just rely on use a big brush, color these in. Later on in the class, I'll show you guys how to kind of bake in solid colors one at a time. So we have a gray up here, but again, this is the gray of the material, not the actual gray that we want. So again, if I was to change this to a blue color, again, the image right here is on top of the material. So the image's color, this red color is going to, in a sense, win. So the undercolor, this, there's no pixels painted on here. So just that color comes through. Let's undo that. So we're just back at our gray. So I want to fill this with actually with a gray color. So let's double click, isolate the selection, go to the paintbrush, and over here let's pick a gray. Let's pick a gray with just like a slight bluish tinge to it. Somewhere in here, let's see what color this is. So let's make it a little bit darker. There we go. So again, just a big brush and a few different camera angles and I have this filled in all the way. 
unhide, grab this bottom piece, paintbrush, desaturate it, make it fairly dark, and fill this one in too. Make sure we get the tops and the bottoms as well. So now we have the base colors. This is kind of the easy part in a sense. Now is when you get to have fun and go in and kind of paint highlights and stuff in here. So let's kind of worry about the plastic first. So let's grab this. Let's actually change the proportions of this. Just a little bit. Just the neck of this hammer is looking a little bit long. So let's grab these verts and just move this up a little bit. There we go. So looking at this, let's look at the plastic first and let's actually get rid of the transparency on this. So items, hammer ref, transparency is at 50, so I'll just put it at zero so it's not transparent at all. So again, this plastic is gonna be a little bit shiny. We're not gonna actually change its material values at all like before when we wanted to make something shiny. We're actually just gonna on these edges, we'll go ahead and just paint in some highlights and try to have fun with this. Oops, I missed a little bit of red here. So let's go to the paintbrush. So again, I want to make sure that I grab the same color red. So instead of picking it down here and trying to match it, I can just middle mouse click. You can see over here it switched over to that red color. Now I can fill that color right in. And let's look, it looks like up here. So let's middle mouse click and we'll make sure we fill in that color as well. There we go. So if I want, normally or this guy's at default, I can actually just change this to texture. And now I get kind of just the actual colors that are here. So let's go ahead. And now that I don't have the lighting kind of influencing things, the handle looks a little bit darker. And this part needs touching up. So I'll just do that off camera real quick, save you guys some time. Here we go. I just touched up those areas real quick off camera to save you guys sometime of me just coloring some stuff. So let's again start with this plastic at first. Let's go to the paintbrush, middle mouse click, grabbing this red color. Now I'm just going to make this color a little bit lighter. So now what I'm going to do is go in, let's turn our wireframe on so we can see our geo. And I just want to put little highlights on these edges. So probably right here-ish, but again, I don't want them to come in super dark. So again, I don't want every one of my strokes super visible. I just want this to be kind of subtle. So over here in opacity, let's drop this down to like 20%. Actually, let's switch to the paintbrush I still want at 100%, but the airbrush, take him at 20%. Again, I'm using a tablet so I can kind of gingerly put this in. Turn this off so it's not so bright. There we go. And again, airbrush, 20%. So what I could do is if I put a stroke, let's actually go back to the paintbrush so it makes a more apparent stroke. If I put a stroke right here, ideally I'm going to want one right here as well. So let's turn on symmetry on the X and see if that works out. So stroke here, lo and behold, stroke right here. So again, having the symmetry on in the X can definitely save you some time. This whole hammer is pretty symmetrical, the left and right sides. So again, unless I wanted like a scratch on one side or something, I can go ahead and paint this. Kind of twofold. Let's actually increase that. That 20% is not coming through all that much. So there we go, something like this. And for sake of time, let's just increase that to like 60. So again, symmetry on the X is on, so we're getting these coming up on both sides. So I can put this stroke in here. Again, if I want to, I can grab this blur tool and come in, blur these together. So now I have a wider highlight. 
It's a little bit faded, so let's grab our color. Lighten it again. This might be a little bit too light. Now I can just go ahead and just put a little center highlight in. Something like that. So let's do the same thing to the front. Darken this red back up. Bigger brush. And again, this is something that if you've had more experience with digital painting, it's going to come to you a little bit easier. And also some people want to take advantage of Photoshop brushes, so they'll want to do this in 2D. But again, if you're painting it in 2D, you have to paint on one side and then paint on the other. You don't get the benefit of painting symmetrically. And also painting across seams. So I'll just finish this up off camera real quick. There we go. Turn the wireframe off and let's look at this. So again, we kind of have a highlight going. If I unhide this from texture, go back to default. Again, now I have the lighting in the scene that's happening. So again, the one thing that's going to make your textures look a little bit weird, aside from the smoothing, is going to our material. This guy's specular mount is currently set to 4. So we drop that down to 0. Now I'm not going to have an actual specular value interacting with the lights, messing with my value that I painted on there. Let's go from default back to texture so we can see this. Now, just overall looking at the plastic, let's turn this back on. Let's actually just have kind of some subtle strokes in here as well. So paintbrush, red color, bigger stroke, symmetries on the X. Oops, we don't want that much opacity. So back to our airbrush. So now I'm just making some kind of strokes in this center area just to make it look a little bit more worn. Again, get a little bit in there and a little bit on the back as well. Now this feels like a little bit more like worn plastic so that kind of tops and these bottoms right here haven't been really banged around as much. Let's go ahead jump down to here. So here we have a bunch of little holes in here so this is something that you could take advantage of Photoshop, copy paste, or you could go in here. Again I won't do this all the way through, but you could come in here and just put little holes in here. What do we have? Rosa 4. So again doing this by hand is going to be something that kind of takes forever so this would be something that I'd recommend maybe photoshopping this whole pattern or just grabbing and duplicating holes right inside a photoshop but you could always do kind of your reference in here and just say that i know th these are the polygons that i want those dots to be on all the way down so let's airbrush potentially make a new layer and just grab those paint those now i say okay i know in this bar right here. So let's select that. Dunk. This is where those dots are going to be. So again, that's not something I'll waste your guys' time with, but definitely go in and put something there as far as a grip. And then down here, you don't need a logo or anything, but that could also be something you could have fun with. So as far as the general rubber goes, before you put all the holes in, you could do kind of a similar thing that we did with the plastic. So again, just getting, let's make this a little bit brighter. Some general color differences in here. And again, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the recording. Grab a little bit of a darker color. Ooh, that's a little bit too dark. So instead of changing the color, just drop the opacity. And 
and say, and this could be something that before you actually put in all those little dots, you could go in and do like a general enhancement of your rubber right here, just to get some color variance in here. So that's not just one solid filled color. So again, lastly, I'll try to speed this up a little bit, looking at this metal. You can kind of pick highlights. Let's grab color and just do this kind of directionally. Brighten this up a little bit. Around here again, symmetry still on. So actually, at first I want this to be a little bit more subtle, so let's drop that opacity down, or again, you could just change the color a little bit. Let's get this hammer kind of where we can see it, just so we're not just basing our color off nothing. We're kind of using this as a reference. So again, drop a highlight right here. Same thing underneath, and then again, just general highlight. Again, I could definitely grab an edge and put a more pointed highlight around this rim. Again, making it lighter on the top, darker on the bottom, just assuming that we have some type of top light happening. So again, bigger brush strokes. Fill in that color, something like that. And again, the same thing will happen on the other side. This middle can be kind of a mid-tone. You could do the same thing kind of down here. But again, just trying to have some fun with this. And again, not take it overly seriously. Because again, this isn't designed to be some amazing portfolio piece that you hang on to forever. It's just more of a giving you guys one last chance to see a full model texture and unwrap of something. If I wanted to, I could go in and paint that little square, put the text in there. But I'm guessing you guys are going to get the gist of this. Again, could get a little bit more color going on the edges here. So again, one other thing that sells metal quite a bit is to occasionally have some sharper highlights on here. And again, you could go in, color pick, mix and match this stuff as much or as little as you want. But again, at least for this assignment. And again, my uh, base color under here isn't the greatest. So um, let's actually save this out. So again, if we wanted to do the saving process, this image is a separate image. Right click, hit save. That saves that image on the desktop. Let's go ahead and save my Hammer01 file. Let's open up this texture in Photoshop and see what we can't do to improve it real quick. Let's open Photoshop. So looking at this, and this is a common problem that I see is I saved that image out and now looking over here it looks quite a bit lighter than our image over here. Let's go ahead and just compare these. So again our hammer handle is right here. It's a lot darker. Everything else our metal's darker and it's just not kind of the right color. So to fix this problem if you do have it again it depends on what your initial settings are. 
what I want you to do is, again, normally have your images over here. So open up your shading tree, click on this image right here. Again, can be selected here as well. But again, both of these are selected. It's an, this one's the important one to have selected. And under this, under image still, you want to go to color space and set this to linear. Now, right click, save as. We'll just name this hand paint 2. Hit save. Now let's go ahead and open that one in Photoshop and we get something like this. So again, this is the one that was set to default. This is the one that's set to linear. This is closer to the one that we want. So again, if you have that problem where you save out your textures and they're a little bit the wrong color, again, just remember that right as you're saving it, click on the image itself, go to color space, on this image still tab right here, so properties, image still, go from default to linear. Linear is the one that you're going to want. And again, that's just if your textures are saving out this lighter color. So again, from here, our initial problem was our hammer head was a little bit too dark. So instead of repainting stuff, we can just come in here and roughly select these islands and go ahead in the levels and change these and lighten it up, darken it up, colorize it, do all your normal Photoshop features. So that's one thing you can do to do color changes and again if you do those changes again all your painting information is still going to be there. The one other thing I wanted to kind of point out would be just this machined look, so we have all these little kind of flakes in the metal. Let me zoom in on a little bit more. Oops, clipping plane. There we go. You can just see that all the stuff's kind of going this way. This one stuff's going this way. So just a quick trick to get that look. If you wanted to do some work in Photoshop and some not, what I'm going to do is just take a big blank canvas, make a new tab, fill it with a gray color. And now what I'm going to do is just a few quick things in Photoshop. So filter, noise, add noise, 7.6%. Yeah, that'll work. Hit OK. Now filter, blur, motion blur. So this guy. And I want this to be at pretty much a 90 degree angle. So 0, 90, doesn't matter. So let's go back to 90 so it's going up and down. And now if you look at this, you see you get those same striation up and down patterns that are happening in this. Let's go to the levels and see if I can't modify this to make it a little more apparent. There we go, just make it a little bit more contrast. Oops, my bad. But regardless, that's a quick thing that you could do and have that go with the direction of your unwrap. Again, you might have to go in and warp this. So, oops undo that. So make sure this layer is select, selected. So image, oops, sorry, not image, edit, transform, warp, and now I get kind of this window where I can grab this, use these, so if I needed the curvature of the hammer, let's say, I could come in and bring this down. This one can just keep going this way. Now you see you get this curvature that would be the side view of the hammer, for example. And as soon as this operation happens, now you can see all these little striations that were in here are kind of doing a curved nature this way. And these ones over here were unaffected. They're still going up and down. So just something else you can do if you wanted to work on this a little bit more. And again, from here, I can kind of see where my, all my work was. I could go in here and new image. Now I could put in these holes. So put in, oops, a few of these, then copy and paste as opposed to drawing dots all day long. So again, just more time saving stuff. So overall with this project, the idea is to just kind of have fun with a simpler asset, take advantage of symmetry, and again, go with the hand-painted look as opposed to trying to use the 
images to make your textures for you.